I've spent a lot of money buying accessories for this scuffed up 10 year old camera. Because on its own, it's practically useless, but with a bit of help, the footage speaks for itself. So I'm gonna show you why I spent far too much time and money building the ultimate rig for this lovely piece of junk. This was my first attempt at building the ultimate rig. It doesn't look like much, but that's because I designed it to be as small as possible. And that comes with some unique benefits that you'll see in a second. But first we gotta look at the footage. With the right locations and light, this camera holds up in spite of its size. I wanted this rig to be the digital equivalent of a Super 8 camera. And if we're faking the Super 8 look, this is perfect. It doesn't shoot 4K and it naturally has a deeper depth of field. I can get a fairly authentic Super 8 experience if I had this beautifully small zoom lens and a $20 loop, which is only necessary if I'd like to see the screen while I'm setting exposure and focus. Well, truthfully, it only shows most of the screen, but I'm cropping the footage for Super 8 anyway. This rig has a battery plate, which allows me to film with just two of these instead of 37 of these. And unlike a real Super 8 camera, I can record sound and the hand grip doubles as a mini tripod. So as long as you get the camera and the lens secondhand, shouldn't be much more than $1,000. Not bad for a camera system that weighs as much as a bunch of bananas, but it really comes into its own when you're trying to film somewhere without a permit, like on this pier. I figured we'd get away with filming inside the arcade, Go, I step. but I failed to notice that my lens had decided to have a little tantrum. This is all the footage I got before I had to reboot the camera, and then we ran into a security guard. Apparently you're not supposed to skate on the pier. But security never mentioned the camera, so that's a win for my stealthy Super 8 rig. But let's be honest, I can't call this the ultimate setup. I'm really happy with the footage from this tiny cheap lens, but on a professional shoot, even one malfunction is too many. So let's change the lens for something more dependable. And while I'm there, let's upgrade some other stuff too. This rig is a better balance between size and features. For one, I can see the entire screen now because I'm using an EVF. And my Metabone speed booster gives us more light and a blurrier background. Now this camera's HDMI port has been known to just fall out sometimes. So I got this adapter that should protect the Delica port. And so with those modifications, I can officially call this my ultimate rig for outdoor solo shoots. The ultimate rig would look completely different if I was filming indoors with a crew. So this is my ultimate rig for traditional shoots with a crew. The whole thing sits on a shoulder pad that can quickly attach to a tripod. With the camera balanced on my shoulder, it's not so easy to pull focus, so I added a wireless focus motor and a monitor. All of that can be powered for many hours thanks to this V-mount battery, and we can even transmit the footage to a director's monitor or add a matte box for show. Even without the unnecessary matte box, this is five times heavier than my Super 8 rig, but it's far more suitable for this shoot that's organized and on location rather than spontaneous and outdoors. Even so, I didn't fancy taking this giant into a library without permission. That's a recipe for getting kicked out again. So I used my Super 8 rig and managed to get the shot we needed while staying under the radar. So to build a rig like this from scratch, it costs about $2,800 without lenses. But fortunately, I had most of this kit from other shoots I've done over the years. So what I've learned from this is that for me, the ultimate rig is one I can tailor to whatever I'm shooting. The flexibility to shoot like this or like this, so long as you don't mind spending a bit of time with one of these. So I have to admit that I went back on eBay and I bought another one of these cameras. It might be a terrible financial decision, but I reckon I can get a lot of use out of not one, but two of these little cameras. Plus, I'm having a lot of fun. Thanks for watching. Now for this month's bonus video on Patreon, I've posted an early look at my color grading process for the footage in this video. I will make a YouTube video about color grading soon, but if you'd like to see the in-depth version today, then please do consider joining the DSLR Guide Patreon community. All patrons get access to the seven bonus videos that I've made so far, plus you can download the color grading preset that I used for this video. Anyway, that's all. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next time.